I'm delighted to share a case study for December, the first of two case studies this month from Barb Corso Ide. She's entitled her case study, Stand Tall. And I'm sharing the narrative that Barb shared with me. The mystery began in May of 2021. I noticed an unusual plant growing in one of the flower boxes on the front porch. My husband, the gardener, wanted to pull the weed, but I was excited to see if this might be something special. Soon it became clear that a sunflower had somehow found its way into the potting soil, perhaps from a bird, maybe a hidden treasure in my hubby's compost. Regardless, I was thrilled. We were studying the rebel archetype that month and I thought this flower was a perfect metaphor. In my story, the flower was female and I named her May. By the end of June, May had climbed to the rooftop and opened her first bloom. She was beautiful. I took dozens of pictures of her throughout the summer and made sure she had a gallon of water every day. My hubby also helped her stabilize by stretching a cord from the porch light around her stem. This proved to be invaluable as she continued to set multiple blooms throughout the summer. This is the view of our front porch, a great example of asymmetry. When our August CST materials arrived, I was eager to dive in. However, I wasn't excited about the prostitute archetype until I honed in on the idea that the prostitute protects faith. Don't sell out. Stand up for what you believe. That's when the wheels began to turn. I compared my career as a school administrator to the sunflower standing among the petunias. I loved teaching and only became a principal when I was struggling economically as a divorced mother of two young children. My heart as a principal was teacher-centered and there were many times that I challenged what was coming down the bureaucratic chain of command. I had ambitions to serve as a district level curriculum director but in the large metropolitan area where I lived, I couldn't always go along with questionable practices. So I retired as a very happy middle school administrator. While considering this idea of leadership and a wayward sunflower, I remembered a picture taken of me when I was about six years old. I'm standing in our front yard without landscaping or grass, dressed in my dad's World War II army shirt and leather football helmet. While other girls were playing dolls, I played army, leading my troops to victory every time. I walk every morning, but I'm limited to a third mile loop around my dead end street and a cul-de-sac to save my knees. My camera takes great pictures, so I amuse myself by observing odd things I see on my walks. I have lots of shadows, tall shadows of me walking. Now I was thinking about the tall shadow, the sunflower, the little army girl, and the prostitute. A story was percolating. I decided to play around with photo collage iPad apps, and this picture seemed to fit as a background for my story. Enter the stage play analogy. Now that I had my background photo, I could introduce the child and the shadow as leading roles. The trick would be to make them contrast as design elements. I have a version of PicMonkey that has a quick background remover and I used it to isolate the army girl. I used the same process with the shadow. It was a little wonky, but I was able to use it. I also changed the color of the shadow and played with that and wondered whether it would contrast with the background photo. In the collage, I tried using four different layers, the background of the porch, a close-up of a yellow sunflower, a purple shadow, and a purple army girl. It was way too busy, but there was a germ of composition coming together. I changed this, the close-up of a sunflower to an outline and tried that, but it was way too busy. Any evidence of any story is lost. The layer was not a supporting cast member. 
I liked the way the shadow stood behind the child. There was a definite relationship. I was standing behind my younger self, encouraging her to always believe in herself. She was a leader, stand tall, just like the sunflower, and don't worry about taking chances if it's what you believe in. Who knew a sunflower could thrive in a flower box? Now I had my story, but the composition lacked unity. It was time to experiment with an app called Picasso. Picasso has several different effects and you just have to experiment to see if one pleases you. This one was a no. This was too subtle for what I was trying to say. This didn't have enough contrast. This was the one. I loved the way the shadows stood out, the way the yellow leaves contrast with the dark blue ones on the same stem, the way the army girl looks so hopeful, the little red petunias that made me smile. I also enhanced the brush strokes, giving the image a bit of movement. Other supporting cast members are the orange and green, plus the almost hidden teal. These colors would play a role later. At this point, I thought I was done. I planned to take the composition to Spoonflower and print a panel that I could quilt and hang. First, I had to resize the image to make it large enough to print, and I used Preview on the Mac for that. You open the picture, use the Tools menu, and there's a size category. You can select the number of pixels per inch, which maintains the quality of the image in the enlargement. In Spoonflower, I was able to create a 25 inch by 36 inch panel with crisp details. While on the Spoonflower site, I experimented with their repeat options. This is a yard of fabric that has a total of 15 mirror repeats of the original design. I had created some unintended options for borders and accent blocks. Now I was thinking bigger than the small wall hanging. And I just wanna break in here to say that this is one way to build contrast and relationship, which we've been studying this year it's been sort of an undercurrent of CST in a general way because contrast and relationship are so critical to creating work that's interesting and also hangs together. And using a photo in the way that Barb has done here, turning it into the mirror repeats gives her an automatic relationship. And as you will see, she takes full advantage of that. The rectangles in this image show the pieces of the yardage that I used to border two sides of the panel and the pieces that ultimately made the accent blocks. But first I went through some design challenges. I had sashing decisions to make. And for those of you who aren't quilt makers, the sashing is the strips of fabric that might go around a particular piece in order to expand it or emphasize. I thought square in a square, six inch setting blocks would be the perfect complement to the panel. I pulled bright colors from the panel and cut out six little army girls to fuse onto the blocks. Fortunately, I pinned them on and they were saved for the final composition because these blocks were totally overwhelming in color and they were a complete distraction from the starring feature of the quilt and the story almost got lost. Now I was trying to force some of the delicious elements from the mirror images, and I had reverted to an earlier habit that always got in my way. I let bold colors rule. I didn't take time to step back and evaluate what was going on. So at this point, I was totally frustrated and ready to retreat to the original panel wall hanging idea. Maybe I didn't need any supporting cast members. However, in a review of the mirror fabric, I saw the sunflower arches and porch. The little army girl fit in perfectly. I could see those six blocks to balance the composition. Six blocks for the six-year-old army girl. The composition had outgrown my design wall, so I laid it on the bed and I decided I was satisfied. 
I took the quilt to a professional long armor who created lovely designs, including two big sunflowers in the negative black space, which we can't really see in this particular shot of the piece. But they're done in a smoke monofilament thread, which is nearly invisible, but a nice surprise when you look closer. And the orange outline is really a sweet finish. That's Jane speaking. The epilogue. May's life cycle lasted until August 31st. She was brought down by the winds of Hurricane Ida, which made its way across Tennessee. She had a total of 16 blossoms when she collapsed. Some of them are resting in a box, waiting for the seeds to dry. I hope to plant them next spring. I'll miss this crazy sunflower. I marvel at her ability to thrive against the odds and will cherish the lessons she taught me about the light side of the prostitute and about myself through a child's eyes. Thank you to Barb for sharing her text and her images. Always remember that these materials remain the property of the artist and that permission must be granted prior to copying or sharing anything that you have seen right now. Thanks to Barb, and I look forward to welcoming other members who step forward in the future to offer their own experiences and work as one of our case studies.